somewhere beneath the surface lies not so much the future, but vengeance. At least, if your name is Nemo. The Jules Verne classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea brought us the Nautilus, at a time when submarine warfare was a concept yet to be fully realised. But our knowledge of the iconic submarine is tempered by a cloak called translation. Join us now as we consider this iconic artefact of science fiction. Our most enduring image of the Nautilus comes from the 1964 Disney film starring James Mason and Kirk Douglas. Designed by Harper Goff, we see this iron baroque monster recreated here in miniature in these photographs taken in 1978 at Disney World. This though is not the Nautilus described by Jules Verne. Goff argued that Nemo and his men would have built the Nautilus using scraps from other shipwrecks and whatever salvaged materials they could get their hands on. In the novel, Nemo orders the parts from various companies so they can be put together in secret. In the Disney film, Nemo and his submarine become more fantastical. As James W. Mertens points out, Hollywood changed Verne's scientific fiction into science fiction and, like the translators before them, removed the didactic nature of the original novel. The Disney Nautilus reflects this. Verne is very specific in the description he offers the reader, but we shall delve into that shortly. In this video, we shall add a little context, look at Verne's exterior description of the Nautilus, and discover what starting a fire with a lentil has to do with Jules Verne. And if you rather like this video, do please press the like button, share the video, and subscribe to this channel. If you don't like this video, then press the dislike button, and subscribe to the channel anyway. Jules Verne wrote his scientific romance during the Second Empire under the Emperor Napoleon III, before the Franco-Prussian War swept the Emperor from power and returned France to a republic. With the 1866 Austro-Prussian War fresh and an ambitious Otto von Bismarck steering the German states towards unification, it was a time of suspicion and tension in Europe. Meanwhile, the American Civil War had ended and been witness to the first sinking of an enemy ship in anger by a submarine. Elsewhere, the daring and bloody career of the Confederate warship Alabama had been brought to an end in 1864 off Cherbourg, and the parallels between the Alabama's career and that of the fictional Nautilus have been noted and are remarkable. The Nautilus has a cylindrical hull with tapering ends, but is also described as being cigar shaped. According to Captain Nemo, she is 70 meters long with a beam of 8 meters and she displaces 1,500 metric tons submerged. She has a four bladed propeller with a diameter of 6 meters. Two diving planes are located about her midships, one to port and one to starboard. A platform of middling height stands on top of the hull and features a recess for a boat. At the front end of this platform is the pilot house or wheelhouse with a floor space of 2 meters by 2 meters. At the back end of the platform there is a lantern. This is a strange location for such a lamp as it would surely interfere with the helmsman's night vision as we are told the wheelhouse has four windows giving the helmsman all round vision. Worth noting is that there are translation issues with many English language versions of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Jules Verne was not served well by his translators. Arthur B. Evans states that many British and American translators embroidered or cut out sections of Verne's books, abridging technical descriptions, changing character names, or even eliminating characters altogether, and even adding whole paragraphs not by Verne himself. 
In 20,000 Leagues, one reference to the Northwest Passage, La Passage du Nord Louis, is wrongly translated into a reference to the North Sea. While Captain Nemo presses an electric bell three times, in the English translation the bell becomes a clock. One particularly amusing example is the translation of and armed with a magnifying glass, he started a fire. This was translated into the absolute classic, and provided with a lentil, he lighted a fire. As the website The Veneeran Era points out, the English translation of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, most commonly available, is the Mercier Lewis translation, which, being in the public domain, costs publishers very little to print. But the Mercier Lewis translation is missing a quarter of the original French text much of which features the more technical aspects of the Nautilus's engineering. The original translations into English were directed towards children by the publishers. The real Verne was technically minded, and there was even some social commentary in the works. For example, he was critical of the British, although he was French and for the French that is a national sport. In a future video, we shall explore the internal arrangement of the Nautilus, as Jules Verne describes it. But for now I hope you liked this video, or at least didn't hate it.